Hello, my name is Jack Jacobs. I am the Chief Scientific Officer of Zicha Regenerative Medicine. We are a biopharmaceutical company based in Las Vegas, Nevada. Our company is developing human FGF1, a natural growth factor in our bodies, for the possible treatment of neurodegenerative diseases. With this short presentation today, I want to show you our beliefs that FGF1 may be a potential treatment for ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. On the next slide, our hypothesis is that we believe that inadequate blood flow in the brain and the spinal cord initiates neurodegenerative diseases, including ALS, leading to motor neuron cell death and muscle weakness. This next slide reminds us how incredibly vascularized the brain is. In fact, it is the most vascularized organ in our body. As we see here, these blood vessels supply the billions of neurons in our brain with nourishment, including glucose and oxygen, and importantly, remove metabolic waste that all cells in our bodies generate, such things as reactive oxygen or beta amyloid protein, which accumulates in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. So what is this link between decreased blood flow in the brain and neurodegenerative diseases? This next slide shows studies which have been done. I'm not gonna go in detail into these studies. At the end of this presentation, I'll show you a link where you can go to a webinar we recently gave that gives more detail on these studies. But what these studies show in the brains of individuals with neurodegenerative diseases such as ALS, there's impaired angiogenesis or impaired blood vessel growth. In addition, MRI imaging of blood perfusion deficits can be done with new and potent MRI imaging technologies. And what they've shown in ALS patients is that there are specific blood perfusion deficits in the motor neurons. In addition, endothelial cell dysfunction. Endothelial cells are the cells that line each and every one of our blood vessels. The cells are important for the transport of nutrients into the nerve cells and for the removal of metabolic waste. In diseases such as ALS, these endothelial cells become dysfunctional. The blood vessels become leaky and there is lack of blood perfusion to the motor neurons in ALS. Finally, work, exciting work actually from Columbia University School of Medicine in New York has shown that in neurodegenerative diseases and also as we age, that the pools of stem cells in older adults are less active than in younger adults. And that the reason for this inactivity in older adults is because of a lack of blood perfusion. Okay, now let's go back and look at angiogenesis. Uh, FGF1, the protein we are developing, is the most potent stimulator of angiogenesis or new blood vessel growth in our bodies. As shown in this slide, angiogenesis is simply the growth of capillaries and small arteries from pre-existing vessels. Now you use this process every day in your body. If you fall down and cut yourself, angiogenesis is part of the healing process. And internally in our bodies, when we have minor injuries to any tissue, any internal tissue or organ, FGF1 is involved in stimulating angiogenesis to repair that tissue. Now let's look in the capillaries and the spinal cord of mice who are suffering from ALS. In this next slide, you see capillaries in the spinal cord of a normal mouse. You see good, uh, a good uh, healthy vasculature. But on the right here, we see the capillaries of a mouse with ALS. You can see less capillaries. You can see this disordering of the capillaries. And these mice will have less perfusion of their motor neurons, leading to the classical symptoms of ALS in these mice. In a second experiment with a different group of animals, they knocked out the gene for an angiogenic growth factor. In this case, it was VEGF, as seen here. Now, VEGF, like our FGF1, is a potent angiogenic growth factor. In fact, FGF1 sits above VEGF in the angiogenic cascade. It actually stimulates the production of VEGF in tissues. So in these animals lacking this VEGF, there was less angiogenesis, there was less neural perfusion, and this led to what's shown here as chronic ischemia of the motor neurons. Chronic ischemia is starvation, basically a starvation of these neurons, which leads to muscle atrophy. These mice show all the classic symptoms of ALS, and one would expect if one introduced a growth factor such as FGF1, you could protect these motor neurons as well as stimulate blood perfusion to restore normal blood perfusion in this area of the spinal cord. So on this next slide, we believe, and others have shown, that angiogenesis is coupled to neurogenesis. That is, the increase of blood vessels, as shown on the right, is coupled to increase production of nerves from neural stem cells. On the left, we believe, is what is happening in a neurodegenerative disease, 
where you have less angiogenesis, less blood perfusion, and with ALS, you have a starvation of the motor neurons. Now, in the next slide, talks about our upcoming clinical trials, which we're planning to start in January of 2019 in subjects with Parkinson's disease. We hope to start a similar trial in ALS patients soon thereafter. For both diseases, we'll be using pretty much the same clinical protocol, and that will be when patients come in about three times a week to receive a two-hour infusion of FGF1, and the trials will go over a five-month period. Zicha will pay all the costs of the trial, and no hospitalization will be required. As I mentioned, the drug will be administered intravenously at an outpatient clinic. Now, this next slide shows that we have prepared a white paper or report on the subject of human FGF1 as a potential treatment for ALS. Uh, we are happy to send you that report. It has much more detail on what I've talked about today. And you can get that by signing up at our uh, website, which is shown here on the final slide. So if you were to request our ALS report, or if you're interested in signing up for our ALS clinical trial, please register with us at this website. Also, as I mentioned earlier, to learn more about the medical evidence behind our hypothesis that a lack of blood flow initiates diseases such as ALS, please view our recent webinar, which is shown here at this YouTube site. We also have an earlier presentation, which focused more on the potential use of FGF1 to treat Parkinson's disease at this YouTube site. Finally, if you wish to speak to someone in our office, please find us at the number shown on this screen. We don't know the outcome of our upcoming clinical trials, but we're going to try. We're going to try to treat these devastating diseases, and we ask you to follow us and keep, keep up to date. Thank you for your attention.